Good evening, and thank you so much for joining us tonight. My name is David Norkowitz, and I am the Director of Vocational Technical Programs. This evening, you will be viewing the fifth and final live event that Shawshank Valley is hosting to showcase its vocational technical programs. Tonight's event will focus on the programs within the transportation and product development cluster. They include automotive technology, automotive collision repair and refinishing, metal fabrication, joining technologies, heating, ventilation, air conditioning and refrigeration, also known as HVAC and R. With the cancellation of our community open house, we decided that hosting live events would be the next best thing in offering you a chance to see our programs. We are recording tonight, so this event will be available on our website so that you can view it at a later date. As you view this presentation, please feel free to post any questions you may have about our transportation programs in the Q&A box. This can be done by selecting the question mark icon located at the top right corner. Simply type your questions into the box. All questions will be answered at the end of the presentation, but can be submitted anytime during this event. And I ask you to keep your questions to a general statement. I also would like to remind you that the application deadline for the class of 2025 is February 1st. You can apply electronically by visiting Sheen Tech's website, selecting Apply Now link on the admissions page. Information about admissions, including information, is also available on this page. At this time, I would like to introduce Mr. Michael Hurley, the Department Chair of the Transportation and Product Development Cluster. Michael? Hi, my name is Michael Hurley, and I am the Department Chair of the Transportation and Product Development Cluster. And before I begin talking about automotive, auto body, HVAC, and metal fab, I would just like to welcome to this live event and discuss a little bit about myself and Shashin Tech, which I think is an incredibly unique opportunity for students. Um, I grew up in this community, and when I was an eighth grader, I had um, just had enough of traditional school and sitting behind a desk all day. I just could, I just couldn't do it anymore. And someone asked me if you know I'd ever heard of uh, Shashin Tech, and I was like, Yeah, I've heard of it. I didn't know much about it, and. My parents took me to the eighth grade um, career night and I was just blown away by it. It was just an unbelievable experience um, to be able to have someone tell you, you know, you're going to build a house and it's not a birdhouse. You're going to build a house. You're going to paint a car. You're going to fix a car. You're going to weld. You're going to install uh, an, an AC unit and get graded for it. Um, it was just unbelievable to me, um, opened up so many opportunities for myself. And I, I think there's a lot of kids that um, can really benefit benefit from something like that in vocational education. And um, Shashin is a great school for that. Um, so with that, um, I'd like to start off um, talking about automotive, um, starting with automotive and going through what they have to offer. All right, so automotive technology, um, we have four instructors. Uh, four licensed instructors and, and an aide, and it's a very busy program. Um, if you ever in there, uh, we, we fix um, cars in the community, and it's it's a very busy shop, and we try to make the kids employable uh, with basic skills and uh, just allow them to grow. <clears throat> Career paths for automotive include, there's so many, um, you get automotive technician, uh, fleet, aircraft, marine, um, shop owners, dealerships. Um, you can go into sales and management. Um, so many career uh, pathways. And if you are if you love it, it's, it's not work. So you could open your own business and really succeed. It's just it's such a busy, busy industry. 
to be a shop owner. Uh, the work environment for automotive is um, well ventilated, well lit repair shops. Um, you have to be able to see what you're working on. Uh, technicians often identify, diagnose, use computers. Um, there's definitely lots of jobs, full-time employment. Uh, if you drive to work every day, um, the cars need to be fixed. Um, so the, the dealerships are open, uh, some, some of them are open seven days a week now. Um, so there's a lot of flexibility. Sometimes they do um, four, four day shifts, you know, four, 10 hours or two day splits. Uh, so it's very flexible uh, work hour environment and overtime is common. Right, how to become an automotive technician. Um, great start is to graduate from Shashin Tech Automotive Program. Um, you'll you graduate with the post-secondary uh, certificate and you can use some of your hours towards your time um, towards your ASC exams. And those who do not uh, complete post-secondary education start as trainee um, technicians. A salary for automotive, um, the medium annual wage is uh, 42.9 uh, as of May last year. The lowest 10% earn less than 24 and the highest 10% earn 68,000. But in New England, um, that'll be higher, um, especially if you're a flat rate tech at a busy dealership or if you're a successful business owner. Um, there are plenty of techs in dealerships all across New England that are easily, well, I shouldn't say easily, they're working, but they love it, um, that are making 120,000 a year just at a dealership. The job outlook is, is excellent. Um, it's pretty much endless. Uh, it's a very, very busy trade. Um, there's there's a shortage of qualified technician technicians. Um, we have people calling the school, recruiting, needing people, needing kids. And I've I've always heard this. Um, if if they can do the work, they'll pay them right away as adults. So there's many uh, job openings uh, for at dealerships, independent repair shops, um, where most service technicians currently work. Students at Shawshank Valley um, will have a very rigorous uh, curriculum. Uh, freshman, sophomore year, uh, you're working on donated vehicles and we actually could use some more donated vehicles from the work on. And then the junior and senior year, they work on uh, live customer um, uh, repairs and, and cars from the community. But engine repair, freshman year, um, electrical systems, how to diagnose, read diagrams, steering and suspension, uh, air conditioning, heating, brakes, um, automatic transmissions and manual transmissions. Um, this is all part of the ASC uh, lineup too. So we try to make you employable for that. The shop experience will also prepare students to achieve success with the automotive service excellence exams. Um, it provides the opportunity to work on donated vehicles, as I said, and customer cars. Um, we try to make the kids employable uh, and improve their soft skills and um, <clears throat> just uh, build up basics. Um, so it's it's set up like a live shop and increasingly complex repair and maintenance projects is what we do. All right, the related theory in the classroom, um, mathematics, science. Um, safety is probably a number one thing that we teach right away and every single year. That's our number one concern. Uh, diagnostic equipment, our scan tools, uh, be able to diagnose a circuit, um, alignments, um, fuel systems, it's direct injected now, so it, that has changed. Emission control systems, every time your car has a check engine light, it's because of emissions, usually a misfire or whatnot. The hydraulic systems, brake systems, um, and countless specialty areas. Uh, licensing here at Shashin for uh, automotive um, is you will get your OSHA 10 hour general industry outreach training card, uh, EPA section 609 safety certification for refrigerants, uh, your hot work safety certificate, you know, for your welding and um, sparks, anything with sparks. And then after graduation, students can receive ASC certification in, auto in eight automotive areas. <clears throat> A uh, co-op placement has been outstanding. Um, and a lot of people, maybe they don't even know what co-op is. I'm not sure. Um, it, halfway through your junior year, um, it, if you're eligible for co-op, you can you can go out and work. And some of these kids, um, they're, they're making $800 a week on their co-op week. And then the following week, they're doing $400 a week because they're doing part-time that week. But we have 17 kids out. Um, 
we probably could have all of them out um, shortly. Um, it's just so busy. And some of our employers include Dan's Automotive, uh, Euro Car Center in Wilmington, Greater Lowell, um, Buick, Kelly Nissan, National Hyundai, Rick's Automotive, Sal's, Sales and Service. That's just a few. Uh, we get calls every single day for co-op jobs uh, in automotive. So it's very, uh, very busy. A student engagement. Um, this is what's so unique about Shawshane, if you ask me, to be able to work and collaborate in a group and think, think your way through problems, critically think, you know, can you solve this? What is this? What is that? Um, it's, it's a great environment and the teachers are collaborating with the students. We're cycling from group to group. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a great environment. I think that's what makes vocational education so special and, and the shop so special as well. Okay, automotive collision, repair, and refinishing. Um, I like to say that we meet by accident, and that's why this trade is always going to be so busy because there's always going to be accidents. Uh, they have two excellent teachers. Um, one of them is very new, just straight out of the industry. Um, these these guys are great um, with their students. Um, it's such a good trade, and it is such a good trade because this trade will always be there because you will always get into an accident if you own a car. It's it's just going to happen. Now, the career path is really interesting in, in auto body. So obviously you get your collision repair technician, which you can also be in management, sales, estimator, um, paint manufacturing, sales reps, sales managers, um, insurance. When you get into an accident, Someone's going to have to appraise your vehicle. Your car is going to be outside. You'll be in work. Someone will be out there in the parking lot appraising it and writing up that estimate. Uh, insurance agents, auto physical damage supervisors. Um, I, I love the related industry segments of this, of this um, trade because this is where it gets so interesting. You can own your own place. You can open your own rental car facility, towing, detailing, publications. YouTube, um, detailing, paintless dent repair. Um, those people literally chase around hailstorms, just following the storms to repair dents. It's 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 really amazing. Um, they paint planes, uh, fleets, wraps, tent. It just it just goes on and on. Uh, the work environment for uh, auto body is. Um, Typically, you work indoors in body shops, uh, well ventilated with their um, air circulation. Uh, so the shops are uh, well ventilated, uh, so dust and paint and fumes can be dispersed. Uh, full time employment, obviously, evenings, weekends, if you're in your own place, you if, if it's winter, uh, you're working as much as you want. Uh, you cannot get into these places in the winter time. If you get into a car accident in the winter and you want to get your car appraised, they're going to tell you they're three weeks out, so that that busy. Um, so it's it's uh, overtime is common. <clears throat> All right, how to become an automotive collision repair technician? Uh, you attend Shashin Tech um, School, a high school diploma and training from a trade technical school or community college with hands-on practice. Um, On-the-job training, assisting experience, body repairs is commonplace. Uh, salaries, um, this is actually one of the higher uh, median salaries across the nation with 54, 842 with the low side of 26.7 and the high side of 73,000, but it does go higher at, depending on where you are in the country. And the sky's the limit. If you, if you love what you do, um, you're gonna, you, the sky's the limit. I, I don't care what trade it is. Um, and, and this is one of those trades because I'll just tell you a quick story and then we'll go to the next slide. I got hit with a carriage in a Walmart parking lot last week, and that dent is $1,500 repair. Uh, just returning a couple of Christmas gifts at Walmart, uh, someone put a carriage into my car. And, and that's just, that's why you need auto body. It's, it's gonna happen, okay. A job outlook, uh, a 2% growth rate uh, from 2019 to 2029. So it is a growing industry and it probably always will be. Best opportunities will be available for those with industry certification and training in collision repair. Our students at Shawshank Valley will um, receive comprehensive safety training on all tools and equipment. 
Um, program highlights is uh, collision damage part, damage part replacement, MIG welding, your plasma cutting, uh, frame correction, straightening out the frame, um, downdraft spray boost with paint baking capabilities. The shop experience will also include state of the art facility training on a chief frame alignment machine with a computer laser measuring tool, metal, composite, plastic and electrical repair. They just got a, uh, a brand new plastic welder um, last year, which is great for bumpers and um, you know all the plastic moldings of the car. A wide range of hands-on training opportunities from completing basic repairs to creating works of art. And that's what I'm talking about, works of art, customizing, frame off restorations. Um, there's a lot of artists in this uh, trade. And there's, if, if you have, if you're restoring a 1968 Camaro, your paint job is gonna cost you over $10,000 for something like that. So this is art here. Uh, the related theory, instruction objectives include fundamental skills in all areas of the field, including um, history of auto body, frame construction, uh, the different frame setups, types and proper use of frame machines, you know, straightening out your frames, uh, paint types and methods of application because they're, it's changing fast. This, in, this industry is changing with the different types of paints. Um, applied collision repair, mathematics, science, and, and theory. Are you licensing an auto body? Um, Affiliated with the National Institute for Automotive Service Excellence, uh, similar to automotive, the AAC exams, um, they have their own segment for auto body. Uh, SB2 safety certifications. If you look at the picture, I mean, they take a lot of pride in that shop. They'll, they'll hang their certificates right up around the wall when they complete them. Uh, the ICAR certification, an online training certification, it's um, something they use with their curriculum there. A uh, co-op placement. Uh, like I said, there's jobs. Um, currently, there's just, it's a busy industry, um, but some of our our uh, co-op employees include Marshall's Auto Body, Bob's Auto Body, Gagnon's Auto Body, Customer Care Center, North Reading Auto, Crazy Customs, uh, Bowtie Shop, Tom's Auto Body. Uh, so there is definitely co-op opportunities out there for Auto Body students. <clears throat> Student engagement. Uh, I've said it before. I say it again. This is what makes uh, vocational education so special is to be able to get out from behind a desk and go into an environment like this where so few people will ever get a chance to be in a, an environment like that and to learn and to critically think and to have hands on instruction and to use your hands and use different ways of thinking. So it's um, it's it's a very active shop. They're very busy over there. OK, metal fabrication and jo joining technologies. Um, we have uh, three licensed instructors in metal fab, and that's another very busy shop. I mean, think about metal. Um, that's metal fab. Uh, that's uh, metal is everywhere. And these guys are the ones that are going to be welding it and bending it and shaping it and cutting it. Um, so this is a very busy industry. All right, career paths for um, metal fabrication. You're obviously going to have your welders, uh, your cutters and solders using handheld or remote, remotely controlled equipment to join, repair and cut metal parts. Uh, duties include calculating the dimensions of parts, study of blueprints, sketches, uh, pathways include apprentice welders. Um, some of these kids getting uh, jobs right out of high school. They're, they're making $30 an hour right out, right, just right out of high school. Uh, certified welders. There's underwater welders um, welding on the side of nuclear power plants. Those guys are making two hundred dollars an hour. It's it's this is quite an industry here. Uh, sheet metal technicians, welding engineers. Uh, the work environment um, for metal fabrication. Um, you can work indoors in those areas that actually design the contain spark and glare. Um, Definitely can work outside. Um, any place that needs a repair, you know, your construction sites, um, maybe a, a warehouse, the, the the railings on the back need to be, meet OSHA standards. Well, that you're going to go out there in a pickup truck and you're going to bring your, your miller welder out there and that's what you're going to do. You're going to go from job to job to job. If you don't want to stay inside, uh, you don't have to. Um, you're going to wear safety shoes and clothing, heat resistant gloves, goggles, uh, face protection, work boots. Uh, very, very flexible hours as well. Um, you're going to days, evenings. Oh, you can work overnight shifts, weekends. 
Um, you, it, it's it's a very busy industry. Um, it's it's very flexible. You could be working on you can be an iron worker work, working um, you know, 200 stories up in the air, getting paid um, you know, 120 dollars an hour. So it's a it's a very diverse industry. Uh, how to become a welder, a cutter, or a solder? Um, obviously, graduate from Shawshank Tech, um, the high school's metal fabrication program. Entry level workers with formal training still receive on the job training, um, and that's true for a lot of um, industry um, in this in this school. Um, you know, you take your skills that you learn here, and then you apply them and you grow. And that's the key because the sky is the limit if you like it. If you love it, it is not work. Uh, vocational technical high schools and post-secondary institutions offer additional training as well. Uh, the national salary median and annual wage for uh, welders, carters, solders is 42.49 in May of 2019. Uh, the lowest 10% is 29 and the highest 10% was 64. Um, again, depending on um, where you are in the country, that'll be higher. And the Northeast will definitely be higher than than um, other areas um, because it's uh, it's a higher wage to live around here. Job outlook: um, nice growth here, uh, three percent growth from 2019 to 2029. Uh, so that's a good that's a good amount of growth. Um, this is really key here. The nation's aging infrastructure will require expertise of welders, um, your, your bridges, the highways, uh, anything that's metal and it's corroded or needs replacement or needs repair. Uh, that's what metal fab is. Uh, so that, if you think about it, there's metal everywhere. It's exposed to outside climates and it needs to be fixed and it needs to be replaced or built or, or added on. Uh, so job job prospects should be good for welders trained in the latest technologies for sure. As students at Shashin Valley will receive complete comprehensive safety training on all tools and equipment and become proficient in a wide range of skills surrounding welding and sheet metal. Um, it's definitely a shop that um, safety is the number one priority. Um, this shop has 20 Miller welders. Uh, those are incredible pieces of equipment um, and you have to be trained on them. Those are $4,000 a piece. They have about 30 acetylene torch stations, three plasma cutters, um, virtual welders. Um, so though hands-on projects, through hands-on projects, students learn basic and advanced layout techniques such as parallel line and radial line development and triangulation, basic and advanced joint design, material and alloy selection, metal eulogy, and machine maintenance is presented. All right, the shop experience will also enhance student skills by completing various projects incorporated into the program. There's a lot of collaboration between metal fab and automotive, uh, metal fab and auto body, um, metal fab and masonry, a machine shop. Uh, I see metal fab all around the school, uh, you know, building railings, fixing doors, welding pieces of equipment for us down in automotive, you know, fixing frames. They do a lot of automotive stuff too. You can uh, weld, um, you know, exhaust pipes and uh, frame repair. And it allows students to apply shop hours towards sheet metal licensure. A related theory in metal fab, um, the theory of welding, sheet metal, joining process, using shop, uh, integrated into related curricula, uh, measuring techniques, your blueprint reading, identifying metal, the different types of metal, how heat is applied to it, what it does, what it changes into, how we can take two pieces of metal and melt them together. Uh, design process, your material layouts and tools, uh, welding applications and safety aspects of acetylene welding, sh shielded metal arc welding, soldering, spot welding, TIG and MIG are covered along with basic trigonometry, trigonometry and geometry techniques in relation to industry standards. Are right, your licensing and certifications for metal fab? Um, you, you'll get you will receive your 10 hour OSHA construction outreach training card. You will receive your Hotworks uh, safety certificate, which looks excellent on a resume right now, by the way, to be able to present that and say, you know, I can, I can weld, I can work around uh, Spark. Uh, that's that's a big deal for a guy that's hiring you or a girl that's hiring you. 
you know, are they certified for that? Um, your AWS certifications, American Welding Society certifications, uh, and you can earn up you can earn up to a maximum of sixteen hundred hours of sheet metal experience and receive one hundred and fifty to seven seven hundred fifty hours of board approved education to sit for a J one unrestricted journey person license exam. So y- you have that uh, when you take that exam, you you have those hours. And, and that's a huge uh, benefit to any student graduating from Shawshank. Uh, co-op placement, again, uh, they have nine students out. Um, definitely high demand. Um, and I, I've talked to some of the teachers over there and the salaries that some of these kids are getting is, is, is fantastic. Um, to be in high school and to make $20 an hour, uh, phenomenal. Uh, but some of our educational co-op programs are uh, D.A. Borowski Welding, Milton Rents, Shrimp Welding and Fabrications, and Southside Sales and Service. Students work on an alternative week basis every other week, and they sometimes work part-time during their academic weeks as well. A student engagement, uh, group projects, collaborating, um, figuring things out, you know, reading your blueprints, um, getting your materials, bringing your materials to the site, um, doing the welds safely uh, with an instructor, um, and, and seeing a finished product. That's what, that's what's so great about Metal Fab too. They can see that finished product uh, when they're done. That's pretty cool. Okay, HVAC, um, heating, ventilation, air conditioning, and refrigeration. Um, three licensed teachers. Uh, one of them just. Um, just was hired uh, straight from industry, so you can uh, lend that perspective. Um, HVAC is a very uh, outstanding uh, trade. Um, it's fi- financially, it's 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 very successful. Um, I could I could just tell one quick story before we start here. Um, my air conditioner broke about ten years ago. I figured, you know, uh, I'll try to fix it myself. I couldn't. I had to call somebody. That guy was there for forty five minutes and I was charged $750. It was a receiver dryer and refrigerant. And he told me right away, there's no warranty on this because your welds are bad when it was installed. So he didn't have to worry about it if it broke again. $750, 45 minutes. So career paths for HVAC technicians working on heating, ventilation, cooling, refrigeration systems, your fridges, your walk-in fridges, your heating units. Uh, working mostly on homes, schools, hospitals, office buildings, um, commercial factories. Um, career pathways include apprentice refrigeration or sheet metal technician. So there's some diversity there. Uh, licensed refrigeration technician. Self-employed. Uh, you can own your own um, business and energy management. Uh, the work environment for HVAC. Um, you're working mostly indoors, um, and the good thing is, I mean, you you get out, you you get in your van, and you're going from job to job. So some people love that just to get out of uh, the same building every day. Uh, outside work occasionally has to be done on heat exchangers. Um, Full time employment is definitely plentiful. There's plenty of jobs for HVAC. Uh, evening or weekend shifts may be required. If you own your own business, you could be on call all weekend, and if you like doing that. Um, it's endless. Uh, there's just so many um, opportunities for you to make money, and that's that's that, that's the key. And I see it all the time with people that own their HVAC businesses. I mean, they're busy, and um, I I hate calling them because next thing you know, I have a thousand dollar bill when something breaks on my air conditioning unit. How to become an HVAC uh, technician? Um, you need a high school diploma, ideally from Shawshank Valley Technical High School. Um, You can apply hours towards your licensing. So we'll give you a thousand hours towards your license here, which is a huge advantage um, for you as far as when you graduate. You can use that, apply, become an apprentice, and you won't have to spend that money on that post-secondary education because Shashim will give you half of it, which is a huge step up on a lot of people. Uh, Post-secondary education or completion of an apprentice program is preferred by employers, but we'll give you half of it, which is a big advantage. Salaries. Um, this is one of the better paying uh, car- uh, careers out there. Um, national median annual wage for HVAC technicians is 48730 in May of 2019. 
uh, the lowest 10% earn less than 30,610, and the highest 10% earn more than 77,920. Uh, fully trained journeyman can earn up to $130,000 a year. I talked to some of the instructors over there the other day, and they have students that are making that, we're talking three, four years after graduation, which is, to me, is um, that's impressive. Uh, that's that's quite impressive. So it's definitely a well-paying well trade. A job outlook, uh, overall employment is projected to have a 4% growth rate from 2019 to 2029. So it's um, good growth potential. Commercial and residential building construction and the growing number of sophisticated climate control systems expect to drive the growth. So a lot of those um, thermostats that are controlled by an app, you know, you can set it up. Um, this, people want this now um, and it's it's growing because the people are changing their systems and it's, it's just adding more and more uh, career opportunities. Uh, candidates will with developed troubleshooting skills, diagnostic skills, uh, electronics, reading electrical diagrams have the best job prospects. All right, students at Shawshank Valley will receive complete comprehensive safety training on all tools and equipment and will be skilled in the operation, design, installation, troubleshooting, diagnosing, repair of air conditioning, refrigeration, heating, and ventilation equipment, the latest technologies. Um, highlights include domestic and commercial refrigeration, gas and electric, oil heating, design, layout, airflow, ductwork systems, um, mini splits, um, all the latest technology. Shop experience will also provide students with real world learning. Um, if you go down to that shop during the day, they're very busy down there. Um, they're tearing apart their air conditioning systems, putting them back together, diagnosing them, asking the students why this failed, why that failed, how can we fix this? And it's they're trying to make them employable, and they are, uh, because they're out in co-op and they're getting jobs and they're doing well. I'll, allow students to apply completed hours towards their oil burner and or refrigeration apprenticeship and technician licenses as well. Uh, your related theory, your classroom, uh, what you need to learn in the classroom, uh, laws of thermodynamics, uh, heat tra transfer methods, pressure changes, temperature changes, refrigeration components, um, compressor starting components and diodes, applications and troubleshooting. You have to be able to diagnose these systems um, you, you're the guy they're calling, um, you're the girl they're calling to, to fix this, to diagnose it. So focus is definitely on electrical uh, principles, meters and your schematics, systems applied to HVAC installation, hydraulic he heating systems, and the calculation of heat loss and gain methods. All right, so you leave here with, from Shashin with your licensing and certifications. You will receive your 10-hour um, OSHA construction outreach training card, which looks excellent on a resume. Uh, again, your hot work safety certifi certifi certificate, uh, which looks great on a, a resume as well. Uh, EPA 608 certification for your refrigerants and handling of refrigerants. Uh, EPA 609 mobile air conditioning certification. Your EPA R410 certification. And like I said, you will receive your hours toward your Massachusetts uh, journeyman pipe, feed, pipe fitter, sheet metal, and state licensed refrigeration technician exams, which is a huge advantage. Uh, co-op placement. As of January, there were seven students employed through our co-op program. Employers include Bonanno Construction, Bruno Brothers Plumbing, Heating and Ventilation Air Conditioning, Central Cooling and Heating, Grinnell Mechanical, LC Anderson, uh, student, uh, students work on alternate week basis, and obviously you can work part time after hours on academic week, um, but there is jobs in this industry and there's a lot of growth. So it's an excellent, excellent um, career area. Student engagement. Uh, once again, it's a busy shop. Um, every time I go down there, those, it's they are diagnosing, taking apart, working in groups, working on individualized projects, um, units and construction, teachers are engaged walking around. It's just It just requires you to think a different way. And I, I think that's just vocational education in a nutshell. It's, um, it's something that I think um, is great for 
and very unique for a lot of different people. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Hurley. Mr. Hurley. So that detailed presentation provided relevant information about all the programs within the transportation product development cluster. At this time, I would like to have my administrative assistant, Helen Hayes, present the questions that have been submitted during the event. So myself, Mr. Hurley, and Andy Pigeon can also provide some follow-up with the questions. Ms. Hayes? Thank you, Dave. I want to start off by thanking everyone for joining us tonight and for all the great questions. The first question I have is an admissions question, and it is, um, when will students who applied find out if they got accepted? Hi, Helen. This is Andy Pigeon. I can take that question on admissions. Um, students who do apply, um, you have to apply by February 1st, um, and I think it's an awesome opportunity for you to explore your options. Um, you have wonderful comprehensive schools in all of our sending districts for high school, but you might as well take a shot, put your application in, see what we have to offer, and then you can try out Shawshin and I don't think you're going to miss out. Um, students will find out in early April of their acceptance here to Shawshin. So it's a very exciting time. Put your application in by February 1st and then check your mailbox come April and we'll notify you then. Thank you, Andy. I have a question for Mike. I think Mike can answer this. What is the difference between automotive technology and automotive collision repair and refinishing? Uh, that's a great question. Um, and the best way I can describe that or answer that is in automotive, you're doing uh, the mechanical aspect of it, your engine, your transmission, your um, electrical. In auto body, you're doing your paint repair, your frame repair, uh, dent repair, glass maybe. Um, so that's the difference right there is mechanical versus interior mechanical versus exterior um, paint and finish. Great, great answer. Uh, the next question is, I recently heard that sheet metal technicians need to be licensed now. Can you talk about that? I'll take that one, Helen. Thank you. Uh, that's, that's a great observation. Uh, just recently, the sheet metal board decided to uh, get their their act in uh, in gear as we like to say and I believe it was 2013 where they made it a point of making everybody get licensed which is a good thing um, anytime you can get a license in any trade uh, it shows the value of, of your 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 craftsmanship so in regards to that um, Shawshin was right on the cutting edge and we usually uh, attend the state board meetings and we we're able to get Shawshin Valley approved. And because of that, um, the state board is now giving us 1600 hours towards the 8,000 hours that's going to be required for working. And we're giving or they're giving us 150 hours towards the 750 hours of what we call education time or at Shawshin, what we call related time. And if I could just take that a step further in regards to licenses, as far as the refrigeration license with the HVACR program, um, that has just been changed. Um, I've been working with the state board on that just recently, and it still has not been officially approved, but it's been gone going for the last year. And right now, out of the 2,000 hours of working as an apprentice, that still needs to be done by the student, but all the educational time, which is a thousand, you get the full amount here at Shawshin by attending Shawshin Valley. And what that really means is saving a lot of money towards night school, since you're gonna get all those educational hours here at Shawshin, both in sheet metal and HVAC, which, which is towards your refrigeration license. And as far as all our other licensed programs, um, every one of our programs here at Shawshin Valley has been approved by the state boards, be it cosmetology to plumbing to electrical. Um, so at Shawshin Valley, we're really involved with the state level and all the state boards. And uh, we're very proud of that. Thank you, Dave. The next question is, um, do the programs within the cluster collaborate with each other and other, maybe other programs in the school? 
Uh, I'll answer that. I think that's a great question. Um, I absolutely, and it's it's a key emphasis um, in our in our school and in our department. Um, I often see, as I said before, is you know, metal fab will come down to automotive, and they'll they'll weld something for us or auto body. Um, you know, they participated in the uh, Stoneham Zoo project last year with with metal fab and and other shops. Um, this this year too, I think uh, Autobody um, clear coated um, some decorations that were put throughout the fall, the fall festivities um, locally. Uh, pump they they um, painted pumpkins and stuff like that, and they they work with other shops as well. I see them around the school all the time. So collaboration is um, is huge um, at Shashin. Well, that's great. Um, I have an admissions question next. I had my interview last week. Do I need to do anything else to support my application? Hi, Helen, I'll take that one. Thank you. Um, nope, a part of our application process is we do take the opportunity to interview each of our students and applicants coming in. It's a great opportunity to have a conversation about Shashin. Um, it, it allows us the opportunity to get to know our applicants a little bit more. And it's a non-stressful, I like to think of it as a conversation that you're going to have about Shashin and what what your thoughts are and what it may do for you but once you do do an interview and you submit your application you have nothing else to do Shashin will handle all that we'll contact your your middle school and your guidance counselors and get all of the information we need to follow up so it's just a an exciting time to sit back and wait thank you the final question that um, we received is regarding co-op. Um, I know you touched upon it, Mike, but they want to know, is the co-op outlook um, good for the programs? Oh, I, I think it's fantastic. Um, you know, we we do field calls almost daily um, and we just don't have enough students to actually supply the, you know, the, the, the need. Um, so co-op is enormous at our school and our numbers are fantastic throughout the throughout the entire school um, and throughout the state. Um, it's just, you know, it's a, it's a great area to work. Uh, a lot of kids have graduated from Shawshank Tech and now they own their own businesses and they're they're hiring our students. And it's it's just like, a, it's a cycle. It just goes over and over again. It's um, it's a great opportunity for a student to, to work on co-op, to get paid, to learn um, exactly what they need upon graduation. And um, it's it's uh, very busy, I think, um, here at Shawshank. Great, thank you. That's it, I don't have any more questions. Why don't, why don't I take it from here, Helen, and like to thank everybody for joining us during tonight's live event. I would like to remind everyone that all these vocational technical program virtual events have been recorded and can be found on Shawshank Tech's webpage by clicking on the admissions page and selecting the live event link. And I'd be remiss if I didn't remind everybody that Shawshin Tech is hosting a Meet the Superintendent in principal live event next Thursday. And I believe that's the 28th of January at six o'clock. And of course, everybody is welcome and encouraged to participate in meeting our new superintendent and our principal. And on that note, I'd like to say good night to everybody and see you next Thursday. Bye now.